Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of the uh, Sapiens Institute uh, Shubuhat series, where we speak about some different things pertaining to Islam, contemporary issues, social sciences, philosophy, and any, of course, related areas. Uh, many of you will know, they were just uh, watching the game. Unfortunately, Morocco have uh, now lost the, uh, the semi-finals of the World Cup. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's, uh, it's a time for reflection, I think, because um, obviously we've, everybody's, I think, got into the World Cup spirit, watching the game and all those type of things. But uh, when that whole showcase um, is over, which obviously has a lot of the you know, advertising and you know, the TV and all this revenue that gets accumulated during this time, when all of that comes to an end, you sort of, uh, you take a minute, you sit back and then you realise that the world is still going on. Do you know what I'm saying? And there's all these uh, issues that we've been discussing in these episodes, which are, I guess, relevant and important to uh, the Ummah and uh, the Muslims in general. And so today we're going to continue with uh, talking about those issues uh, and focusing on really a more interactive session. We're going to be doing some practice debates and speaking amongst each other and going back and forth on the topics of uh, jihad and uh, the age of Aisha, which we discussed uh, recently. So is there anybody that wants to give basically like um, an effective summary, if in a very short way, if you had to summarize in, a, let's actually do this, yeah, if you had to summarize in one sentence, say for instance, somebody comes up to you and they say, you know, uh, I heard for instance that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married a, uh, a six-year-old girl, for example, and they come, they're, they're interested in Islam, and you after having, you know, attended these sessions and read about it and thought about it, seen what's going on in the space, if you had to, in a concise way, say you had one sentence or even maybe two, in a concise way, uh, give a response to that. I think that would be a good exercise to try and think about how you would present that just as a, as a short form answer and then inshallah we'll get into some uh, longer form discussions and back and forths uh, practicing some of the arguments that we've been discussing. So we'll have a, I guess 30 seconds to think about it, uh, how you say that and then we'll come back and hear from all of the uh, participants in the room what you, uh, what you think inshallah. Okay, so inshallah, the participants have had some time to, uh, to think about it. Uh, Tariq, what do you think? Yeah, um, well, we can start by, uh, by basically commenting on, on the environment uh, within the context of the Prophet himself. And, uh, you know, obviously when the Prophet was, was, um, was, uh, was giving his message, mm -hmm. he had many enemies and they would make so many so. Ag accusations against him. Mm. And they leveled uh, all kinds of accusations against him. They called him a liar, and uh, they called him a magician. Mm. They called him a man possessed. And w throughout all of this, no one, not even his worst enemies, made any reference to his marriage to Aisha, which basically shows that you know it, they could have leveled any accusation, the most heinous ag accusations. But this, for even for his his enemies, was a non-issue. So we can we can start by pointing that that particular fact out. Yeah, I would say um, that I think this is a in a sense I think because when we were speaking about somebody who's come and you have to kind of give like a one or two sentence response to the issue, right? And so Allah a minute, like obviously this is a, a back and forth. Yeah, I'm not an authority on this here, but when I think about it. I think that, um, especially for instance, if you're living in the UK, then we have to take like context into into consideration, yeah, because there's often a lot of very like unspoken things that are circulating in inside people's minds. That's one of the reasons why I think fiction is quite important, or even sometimes like so I don't necessarily condone watching a lot of TV shows and things like that, but occasionally I try to like hear, okay, what's the what are people watching and what kind of content is coming out because these are the images that will influence the way people conceptualize these things right so when somebody hears for example like maybe they've uh, been maybe they've come across some maybe right-wing person on, on twitter or something like that who's put in a way that uh, the prophet was uh, over 40 years old and he's uh, became married or he married somebody that was nine we have to take into consideration the image that's immediately going to come into someone's mind when they conceptualize that because they've been hearing about certain things in the media and watching certain types of tv shows and they're going to have an image which is not an image that, from our perspective, would reflect the reality. If we have a sentence or two to speak about it, and we decide to say, for instance, that, okay, the environment at the time was in such a way that uh, nobody had an issue with it, then I think in a sense, we could potentially be past the problem. 
because a person's going to immediately think, okay, what this person's saying to me is that everybody was doing it and therefore it was okay. You see, whereas I think that uh, there's a root, I guess, feeling that comes into someone's heart when they hear that, which is they're in visualizing a, a primary school child being with somebody that's a fully grown man. Yeah. And so that, that, that picture there is what I think is uh, potentially something that has to be, if you're given like a one or two word response, because that's in a sense, I think what's going to put someone's shubha like to rest or with a bit of ease. I don't know what you guys think about that, whether you would agree or not. But with that in mind, and potentially you know, taking that feedback into account uh, for Khan, one or two sentences, I come up to you as a, maybe a non-Muslim or even a Muslim maybe who's just curious and heard this information. I say, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit troubled. I've heard that, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu that he married uh, Aisha when she was, uh, or he doesn't say Aisha, maybe Aisha or something like that. Uh, when she was nine years old, uh, what, 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 what's this? Is this true? Is this false? What's, what's going on here? Where's the next? Um, he, he wants to take, the, I, have to, I have to go to him now, you know, he's, yeah, he's come with the confidence. Yeah, uh, so. uh, firstly, I was going to say, uh, I think the points that you made are very, very important. Um, uh, this is a very sensitive issue. So I think, uh, first of all, I think a, a two-sentence uh, two answer wouldn't be uh, sufficient and would be a bit yeah. uh, reckless. Uh, so a more comprehensive answer would be required. But if I were to give it uh, like a two-sentence answer or a short answer, hmm. I think I would point out that um, we shouldn't uh, f focus on the age itself. Uh, uh, just uh, the, age, uh, the age in a sense, maybe it's a bit cliche, but it is just a number. So uh, uh, what should matter is uh, maturity, uh, whether there's harm involved uh, and things like that. And if you take tho uh, those considerations, I think uh, making a case that uh, it is immoral, I, I think, is impossible. I would like to, before, yeah. before asking uh, ask me the question, I would like to define me what child is. So for you, what, what does child mean? At what age does someone become, become a child and stop being a child? And uh, when you define the yeah. Are you what kind of context you using? What kind of are you using that as a universal uh, uh, definition that goes through ta uh, throughout time and uh, hmm. place? So b if you can define me that first, and then I will, I will, I will be able to. Okay, yeah. So this is this is I guess more in line with um, the arguments that we've been we've been discussing in the in the past couple of weeks, yeah, uh, which we should uh, potentially go into in a second, but. Um, I want to kind of put out this 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 conceptual framework. Once again, you can uh, you can there can be feedback on this, and we can we can see what we think. That generally speaking, in terms of these shubu hats, you have uh, two types of responses, yeah, which you could consider to be directed to two different types of people, or maybe to be suited to two different types of situations, yeah. On one hand, you have your more pastoral setting. Yeah, which is where you're dealing with somebody who is genuinely ha genuinely has maybe a shubha on this issue or maybe somebody who's interested in Islam and they have questions on this. And that, in that situation, I think, is where you have to pay more attention to the imaging, to the language, to the, to the way people are conceptualizing these things in their mind. Yeah? Most of what we've been doing, though, is more on the other side, which is if you're dealing with the raw facts of the case. Yeah? Genuinely, wallahi, this is what I believe. Yeah? In every single bab, whether it's jihad, whether it's something to do with slavery, whether it's Aid or Aisha, whether it's arguments for existence, whether it's morality, in every single bab, if the arguments are purely rational, purely logical, what's the facts of the case, who's right, who's wrong, Islam wins out. Wallahi. If somebody has a logical mind and they think in that way and they just want to look at what's right, what's wrong, who's talking, who's making sense, who's not, we have no issues on this side of the issue, on this side of the equation. Yeah, and so we'll do that first, inshallah, and we'll have some back and forths, and we'll do some uh, some role plays. It's on the other side that the, the, those things to do with imaging and dealing with context and playing and t dealing with people's sensibilities, the ways pe way people interact with the information. That's where all the issues are. That that I really think is the case, wallahi. I, because when I look, for example, and I'm, I'm I'm looking online or I'm looking at people talking, I'm reading some of the literature and stuff like that. I actually become shocked. Because I read some people who are supposed to be like high, high level academics, wallahi. And then you read some of their other stuff and it's all facts, facts, case, arguments, premises. And then they start writing about Islam. And all of a sudden that just seems to go out of the window and it's, it's us. Uh, uh, uh. So that I think is something that we have to, we have to uh, take into account. But uh, we'll, we'll stick with the point you mentioned, you raised, and we'll sort of uh, we'll rehearse the arguments. There's nothing wrong with, uh, with practicing and, you know, remind, reminders and stuff like that. 
a kid in the fight of dhikr, as the Quran says that, you know, to remind if when the or in a situation where the reminders are, are beneficial or they benefit. So you said uh, that the definition of, of, of child here from a logical standpoint would be would be relevant. Why exactly would that be the case? Because child has never been had a definition. There's no a specific age at which uh, a society has defined child ever in history. But wh why are we talking about children in the first instance, though? Because you're asking, you basically, you're asking me, uh, you're questioning the marriage of uh, the Prophet to uh, Aisha, and you you accusing him to marry, to be married a child. Okay, yeah, but there's there's something to note here, right? In the way I phrase the question specifically, yes. yeah, I haven't actually used the word child yet. I just said that, I just used the ages in it. I said uh, six or nine, right? Okay. So, when you've made the discussion about children, it indicates to us something about the discussion, which is that the person, when they hear the age, makes the assumption that the person we're speaking about is a child. And it follows from that, that, okay, and then you have the idea that, okay, it's wrong to... Uh, marry a child for example therefore what yeah. the Prophet did was wrong this is bad this is etc that's the logic behind it right yeah. so how are you breaking that down you're saying well you are effectively disputing the fact that she was a child at that point yeah and on what basis would you do that maybe we should uh, we should no, give you some time to brief okay come on. yeah go ahead I'm, I'm assuming that from your question you're, you're basically assuming that hmm. like the intention of the question is uh, why did the Prophet marry someone at such a young age hmm. when that age is defined as a childhood in this country? Am I wrong? Oh, you're, ask, you're asking me? Yeah. Okay, if, if I'm, if I'm, uh, so I say, uh, yes, yes, I am, yes. So, now my question, for, for, my question to you is, hmm. can you define child? Okay, that's, that's a good question. Now, if, if, you, if you ask, because also we want to be able to practice anticipating what the interlocutors what might say, yeah? So if you ask somebody, now for example, Tariq, yeah? If you ask someone now, for example, on the street in London to tell you, what do you think a child is? Mm -hmm. What do you think that, that person would say? Well, they did envis envisage a primary school or something like this, uh, like uh, infants in, 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 this, in the playground. Okay. A child. Well, that's what be the image that would be in their heads uh, to define a child. You know. Okay. So if if so, we we, we play this out. So now, uh, 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 Khan, <laughs> you forgot your name for sex. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so Khan, he so he you've told him. Tell me what a child is. He says to you, uh, like a someone that's running around in a primary school, for example. Okay. Uh, what's your response to that? So my response is that has nothing to do with age. You can you can go to certain places where uh, kids of, or individuals individuals of five years old don't play with uh, toys or don't uh, behave the same way. So yeah. are you gonna define them as a child as well? So for instance, I when I was five, yeah. I didn't like playing with toys right. as much as I. I s so kids of my age, I find them very uh, childish. Yeah. And I was the same age. So would you would you say I was a child? Okay, but what have we said uh, pertaining to definitions of childhood? Yeah. yeah. What have we said? Like, um, how is childhood generally speaking? So we're, we're talking from the UK. Yeah. yeah. How is childhood gener generally defined? Within this, within this within society. The UK in the UK, different age. Okay, right. at what age? Uh, I don't know exactly what age, but uh, I would say primary school, uh, up until primary school. So okay. after primary school, I would say they would. Right. So, at what age in the UK is somebody considered? Because this is this is what's most crucial. At what age in the UK is somebody considered, uh, from a legal standpoint, to have the ability to choose to, for instance, get married or engage in in uh, sexually with any person that they want? Sixteen to eighteen. Yeah. Oh, sixteen to eighteen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that is that is that accurate? Yeah. The um, what do you call it? The age of consent. Yeah. Is sixteen. Okay, sixteen. But, yeah, but the age of adulthood can go up to eighteen. Depends on the situation. And that I think is totally wrong, in my personal opinion. But <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that that aside. Yeah. So now, 
what? Why do you think it shouldn't be? <laughs> We'll get to that later, yeah, because because yeah, uh, yeah. honestly, I don't think it's actually something that has to be disputed. Because yeah. somebody who says in 2022 London that okay, the age of consent in this society is 16, yeah, uh, it's not. I don't actually think it's anything that anybody here has to dispute for reasons that we'll go on to mention. Yeah, halas, that's the point, and, and of course, 100 uh, percent, nobody's trying to uh, get that law changed or do anything. Yeah. But what a person does now is they take a legalistic definition of adulthood, which remember we spoke about that, uh, particularly in the early 20th century, for example, after you had you know, these voting acts and the f formalization of the schooling system in a certain way, that you had this artificial prolongation of adulthood. That whereas, for instance, even in this country, yeah, 100, 200 years ago, people who were 12, 13, 14 years old were, would have been expected to you know, uh, take on responsibilities and do those type of things. Now, because of the way this, the schooling system has been formalized, yeah, and uh, you know, uh, the uh, the age at which people are supposed to grow up and get married continues to be, you know, prolonged. And now people are getting married 23, 24, maybe some people are still in students 26, 27 years old, you know, and you know, they might be ready to uh, be getting on with their life uh, before that, you know. So, this, this what we have here is a legalistic definition of adulthood, yeah? which by the way, uh, nobody claims really that uh, the laws of a country reflect any type of objective morality. I haven't come across anybody that says that. Because if that's the case, then every single law that, get, that goes through or gets passed, yeah, whether it's in a, some type of, whether it's in a local area or whether it's, it's through the government, what, that, now becomes, that now becomes the law, or that now becomes morality, sorry, objectively that what the government decides, so the, so the Labour government comes and says something and then they lose the election and the next time the Conservative government comes and they say something and that now becomes the basis of, for, for, for all morality objectively within the community. Not only today, yeah, where like if you talk to a lot of people in political philosophy they'll say that there is a distinction anyways, there is a law morality distinction that exists in a lot of nation states and that's, that's, uh, that's accommodated for, yeah? So not only do you make, do you make that claim as if that's something today but you make that claim now for all situations and all times and all societies throughout history into the past yeah 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 this this is uh this is quite far-fetched this is quite far-fetched and so if somebody wants to define adulthood in all situations all times and all circumstances based on legalistic definition that we have in the uk well frankly why are we even taking the uk's definition why don't we take some other country that has a much younger age or another country that has a much older age? Here in the UK, for instance, if you go to uh, universities, yeah, you'll find 19, 20, 19 and 20 year olds drinking alcohol. If you go to places in America where the drinking age is 21, they won't be drinking alcohol. You can be a student in America yeah, and not be allowed to drink alcohol. Come here during the summer, visit a friend of yours, for example, drink as much as you want and then go back and there's no problem. You see, so this, 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 this would essentially be what the person would be doing here, yeah? Once again, facts of the case. How are we defining morality? How are we defining adulthood, yeah? But I, I, I feel like I'm talking a lot, so I don't want to give you guys everything, yeah? So, khair, we've done that. So we've, we've, you've done an interrogation of the, conception, the conceptualization of adulthood that that person would have. And so they might say, okay, fair enough, I can see you're making some, some points here, but... Uh, I, I still consider it to be highly unlikely because this is what a person will say, yeah? Is I still consider it to be highly unlikely, yeah? Highly unfeasible that you're genuinely telling me that somebody who was nine years old was an adult. How are you as a Muslim defining adulthood? How do you respond to that, Maath? <coughs> um, uh, 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 I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to claim that this is a definition of adulthood, but uh, I'm going to say... Uh, the point where I think uh, it doesn't become immoral to marry a woman is one if she's mature enough uh, to handle the challenges of marriage. Is this how you're defining adulthood? Yeah? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm not uh, defining adulthood. I'm, I'm saying th this is how I'm defining. Uh, uh, this, this is when uh, the point where marrying a woman doesn't become immoral. So, uh, is is that okay? I'm going to interrogate you. Yeah. yeah. So, is that for you as a Muslim connected to when you, the person becomes an adult? Uh, again, yeah, so uh, yeah, I think it, b it becomes a bit more um, complex w what we mean by adults and things like that. I, I don't want to get into uh, the whole discussion. 
this, this is the whole discussion. We need to know what an adult is. Right. Uh, no, no. B the, the point is, uh, no, no. The, the, the topic of discussion is whether or not the, uh, ma the marriage of Aisha, uh, the Prophet marrying <coughs> Aisha radiallahu was immoral, not whether she was an adult. So that's an irrelevant point. So she could have been a child. No, no. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I see your point. Okay. If if if, if you're uh, if you're uh, c categorizing people by uh, whether or not they're children or adults, and there's nothing between, okay, then I would say she is an adult. If, that, if that's how uh, you uh, so categorize the, the, people. there's something in between childhood and adulthood. <laughs> what, where's adolescence? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on how you uh, compartmentalize the thing. But the point I'm trying to make is, uh, it isn't uh, immoral, <coughs> one, if she can uh, handle the challenges of marriage, yeah. uh, physical and non-physical, uh, and uh, whether when there's no harm involved uh, in, in <coughs> uh, what comes after marriage, mm. physical and non-physical. And I don't think, based on those two f uh, issues, you can argue that uh, the marriage uh, of the Prophet Aisha so was okay. immoral. Okay. Uh, is there <coughs> anybody else, else wants to come? I think you wanted to say something here. No, just, um, just going back to the whole issue of, uh, of what is a child, etc. When we think back right. uh, to the medi medieval times, mm. I mean, in Europe, uh, you know, they wouldn't have the same concept of childhood. For them, uh, once the child uh, achieved the age of reason, they could, you know, they mastered the, the the language. They can converse properly. They could uh, know f right from wrong. Children, I mean, what we would consider children, they'd be living on their own, uh, working, mm. and uh, you know, they they would be independent. And uh, particularly when we consider back then, the life expectancy was 35 to 40. Mm. You have that factor as well. So back then what we c consider you know children would be independent people who would be you know working on their own yeah. earning a living and the markers of uh, of maturity were different i mean people would would not it wouldn't be so much physical it would be they would you know it, you could basically uh, yeah, it, they they would be you know each case would be separate if you see what i mean i mean mm. you could s look at someone physically some people are mature quicker than others, so you've got that factor, and uh, you know that's that that those are the kind of things that that people back then would have considered when, when it, they wouldn't be the same as us these days. Okay, yeah. So um, we'll we'll do it this. Way. I think that the information here, uh, historical information regarding um, different societies and different places, it's in a sense its weight in the argument has to be has to be considered. Yeah. As f f for our purposes, that historical information would really only go to show that um, you have societies in the past, yeah, who conceptualized and conceived of adulthood in a different way to the way that we conceive of it now in twenty first in the twenty first century in the UK. And so, somebody would have to say, and this would have to be their claim, basically, and this would be what they're implicitly claiming, that every single civilization society before today, yeah, was incessant on. Uh, marrying uh, off children or allowing children to get married when they weren't able or physically or uh, mentally able to do so which would basically be a, uh, a mass I and mean, we have uh, I saw yesterday some people talking about Epstein scandal and things like that yeah you know this would be uh, something of that of that magnitude that the, throughout the whole of hu human history this has been taking place yeah but specifically now getting back to the point we, was, we were discussing with Maath about how are we defining adulthood within Islam? Yeah, and I think actually you, uh, to be fair to you, I think you actually brought or raised something which is quite important, which is that, and I'll say this in a deliberately in a deliberately provocative way, but then I'll I'll qualify afterwards. Yeah, is that in Islam, for instance, somebody could be an adult, and even though they're an adult, it would be immoral from our perspective for them to get married. Yeah. So it, I think it's, it's it's good that you made a distinction between or like a you know you can say a tafsil or some type of detail that you uh, brought on some nuance that you brought to the to the discussion, which is that somebody becoming an adult in Islam doesn't necessarily mean that that person is is suitable or able to get married. Obviously, from us from an Islamic standpoint, yeah, we have these things like you know alamatul bulugh and things like that, right? That generally speaking, for us, moral responsibility is attained by a person at a certain point. Yeah, 
that uh, once you have certain signs and these things, and there's a discussion, it's a fiqhi discussion about when a person is considered to become an adult. But the way we're using that term, or from an Islamic standpoint, which is bulugh, is that point where a person becomes morally responsible with other conditions satisfied. From them being that the person, for instance, has uh, fahm, that they're able to understand the, the, the ayat and they're able to understand the fact that you know this is good this is bad these are sins these are not this that this you do this there is a sin there is a uh, punishment attached to it you do this there's reward attached to it that person has the ability to understand those things and that they have grown up and matured that that would from an islamic standpoint mean that a person is now baligh or that they have now attained maturity that though wouldn't necessarily mean that a person is now uh, one hundred percent able to get married, because for instance, and we we discussed this example previously, somebody who's for in, somebody who's incredibly old and and senile, for example, yeah, um, where you having that type of relationship with them, yeah, would lead to an increased amount of harm, yeah, and this is now we bring in something else here to the discussion. Somebody who is mature, an adult, for example, has more responsibility. If there is harm or increased harm which is attached to you being involved uh, from a marriage standpoint with that person, then we would consider it immoral for you to get married to that person. Yeah. If we keep these things in mind, yeah, that not only are we speaking about uh, physical uh, maturity, that a person is physically grown, but also this concept of harm, people that understand that this is the way we conceptualize the issue, really all of their... Uh, apprehensions should cease because then you understand that from an Islamic standpoint yeah when we talk about the Prophet ﷺ marrying Aisha radiallahu anha yeah that when, uh, when she was nine years old yeah that those those conditions were satisfied and they were in a situation and a time and a place where the cultural conditions or the way people were raised or the ways people grew were such that it was possible for her to be like that at that age and you have to remember once again, Wallahi, that like within the big nation states that we're living in now, yeah, well, there's like 10 million people in London, for example, yeah. It's actually, you can actually see the logic behind there being legalistic definitions of this stuff. Because in the time, like if you're living in Mecca, for example, yeah, I don't know how many people you have. Let's say maximum, maybe you have uh, maybe 5,000, 10,000 people living there. Maybe that even might be a stretch. Because we know, for example, at the Battle of Ahzab, when that was supposed to be one of the biggest. Um, armies that the Arabs had assembled and it was from all different places there were about 10,000 people from all these different tribes and men that they came to march on Medina so how many people were living in Mecca at the time well I don't know whether there's numbers on this but we can consider maybe you have like uh, maybe even a thousand people living there everybody knows everyone yeah so you people know when children are ready to get married and they know and within Islam you have your fathers involved you have the wali his responsibility is to ensure the protection of his daughter when she's getting married and obviously her, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, her father's Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And he had, he, he cared about his daughter, he took her, her, her concerns and all these things. So that type of environment there where, for instance, you don't have a fixed age to say this is where somebody's allowed to get married. You can see how that's feasible. Wallahi, you can see how that's feasible. And you understand that these are the conditions that Islam put in place for somebody to be able to get married. Khalas. Seriously, I think that solves the problem. Now you speak in the 21st century, in the 21st century today, where you have massive societies, yeah? Frankly, some, you could really argue, yeah? I, I, some, honestly, a Muslim could really argue that for it to be like free reign and lax in that way, like it, because you, there are so many people and so many variables at hand that it will be difficult, it'll actually be difficult to have it in that type of way. So they, they come along and they say, okay, boom, 16. Generally speaking, most people in society at the age of 16 will have the maturity, the ability physically and otherwise to be able to make that decision for themselves to give consent to have sex or to get married, for example. Yeah, I don't know if 16 is for marriage. It might be 18. Allah I don't know. Yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't had to uh, look into this, but inshallah soon enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but so, yeah. So within, within, within our society, you, you can understand the logic behind that. But even that's not perfect because I can promise you. Yeah, I can promise you that and we will we'll know people like I would have gone to school and stuff like that in sixth form people that are 17 18 years old I say look if somebody gets into a relationship with you you're not only are you but you might be physically mature but mentally you are absolutely a child the fact that you're here now in in, in sixth form for example getting involved in and doing so even the even that legal that legal boundary that's been placed 
really for you could say convenience or purposes because it, it makes things easier to manage and you have a hard boundary and stuff like that and maybe law sometimes has to be like that and that might have to be a discussion that people have like with the, how big societies are and how difficult it is to, to, to manage these things and the breakdown of, of, uh, of families and social institutions and you know smaller social uh, you know uh, frameworks of organization that would allow people to monitor these things in a, in a more kind of close and in a, in a way that might have been possible in the past you could make an argument for that boundary but it would be absolutely unjust yeah and this is what i'm putting forward yeah it would be absolutely unjust to take that limit which as we've said has all of these historically contingent factors the schooling system voting all these type of things that have affected that boundary which is placed within a nation state framework as we said largely for convenience purposes and to make that the mi'yar or the the objective like uh, criterion that we use to judge every single other civilization society and i think making the argument in this way allows us to in a very kind of um conclusive manner deal with both of the, the the two aspects that we discussed before which is number one the image that a person has in somebody's mind with putting the argument forward like this it becomes conceivable in a person's mind that the, you could have what would be considered an adult yeah with the conditions that we mentioned in islam in that seventh century context that the prophet got married to her whilst also giving somebody the logical framework that they need to be able to understand the issue yeah and uh, there, there are some ahadith that are worth mentioning like when Aisha radiallahu anha she mentions that she was in the um, uh, that uh, obviously the house of Prophet was connected to his masjid and so one day I think there were some like Ethiopians and they were doing like they had they had come from Abyssinia and they were doing like some uh, I don't know maybe some gymnastics or whatever they were doing in the masjid of Prophet and you have Aisha radiallahu anha mentioning that she uh, came behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that she was looking over his shoulder at what's going on at this at this point in time yeah now Aisha radiallahu anha was 18 when she passed away yeah and she was nine years old when she married the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and they got married in Medina so the image you have of a primary school child yeah sorry the prophet when, when we when when the discussions about like his uh, his 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 appearance and these things so there's there's a lot of um a detail that's given to how the prophet used to look yeah that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is that he was not too tall he was not too short so we're not talking about somebody who was necessarily short he was somebody of uh you could say like average stature within his community within the community where Umar al-Khattab was. So what, what, how tall exactly was average stature in the community? Wallahu alam, we don't know. But Prophet was not sure. So for Aisha to be looking over his shoulder, you, the image you have of a primary school child, which you're imposing on a 7th century context, just doesn't uh, fit with the evidence that we have here. It doesn't fit with the evidence that we have of Aisha radiallahu anha and all the things that she was doing in her life and how, how intelligent and articulate she was. Like, uh, wallahi, the, the hadith of Umm Zara in, uh, in Bukhari, yeah? Wallahi, like, it's, it's, like, she's speaking with eloquence about these things that are going on. That's not a, that's not a child speaking, wallahi. If you, look at the, the, if you look at her seerah, if you look at the information that you have, the source, the information that you have, you cannot make the conclusions that uh, people might make uh, in relation to this information, yeah? And, and yeah, and at that point you might have to say to someone, yeah, that like we don't condone things that are happening where there's, there's obvious harms that are taking place, yeah? The Sharia has come to do away with a lot of those things. yuzal, that harm is to be taken away from these things. That's part of the Sharia. Uh, it's part of the Sharia, is compassion, is mercy, is love, is rahmah and all those type of things. But this one specifically is important because it, it's completely wrong for somebody to uh, to think about the Prophet ﷺ and to uh, make conclusions that are negative about him that are, you know, based a lot on this way of looking at the situation. Yeah? Does that, does that, uh, does that make sense? I, mean, I went off a bit, I wanted to kind of keep a bit more interactive, but it's a way that I think uh, I wanted to make the argument. And then, of course, for the majority of this discussion, we've been assuming that we're speaking to somebody who's, you know, just uh, maybe an average Joe or a person who's a. Uh, uh, growing up in the UK, generally speaking, most people have like some type of liberal inclinations, particularly amongst the youth and those things. But then we have all of the um, the more nuanced points that we mentioned. If you're speaking, for instance, to uh, to a Christian, maybe or somebody who's Jewish, for example, or some of the other traditions. I remember you brought out some source information from um, some of the, I think, the Hindu texts. Was that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. The, um, the Krishna married. Um, I think it was uh, Rukmani or something. Mm. 
Yes, when she was uh, six or seven years old. Mm. That's in the actual text of the um, the, the Vedas or whatever they are. I don't have it to hand, but uh, I think I recall it was uh, it was in the holy books. Yeah, uh, it did describe her age and uh, and it was uh, marriage to Krishna. Yeah, of uh, Rukmani. And that's from the the Hindu text. Yeah, from the Hindu text. Yeah. So we have that, and then uh, uh, for Khan, what did we say that we uh, we have from the um, from a biblical standpoint? Uh, we have the book of number book of numbers, which mentions um, what was the word. Which yeah, uh, which means? Which means a uh, young child, a uh, young uh, little girls. So little girls means. Um, there's, dif there's different um, definitions of the word, but generally means little girls. Yeah, right. So we have those things, yeah? yeah. And bringing that information in at this point, yeah, it, it safeguards you against, like someone might say you're doing a two core quay. If, if somebody comes to you and they say, Yop, the Prophet ﷺ did this, yeah? And the first thing you say in response is, well, this is also in the Hindu text. Well, this is also in the Bible. Well, I can show you ex all these societies in, the hi in history that this, these things also took place. Then what a person's understanding is that effectively the Muslim position is that, well, yeah, I mean, it might be a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, potentially you might, you might even be uh, implicitly conceding that it's wrong, but everybody else did it. So therefore it's okay for us to do it, which, which is not the case. It's not the case at all because we have, as I mentioned, all of these like you know conditions and, and way of understanding the mas'ala and all those type of things and uh, I do just want to finish this and wrap up on this point inshallah that uh, it wouldn't be enough I think for us to be on the back foot on this issue yeah like now like we have to step forward and say look we have a way of, of understanding adulthood and childhood yeah because the sharia we believe like we believe islam yeah that it's it's suitable for all situation for all situations and times that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed multiple revelations from adam alayhi salam all the way up until uh, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that those they came and eventually met, some of them were corrupted and they got taken away and stuff like that and really i don't think anybody seriously disputes those disputes that that we don't have those uh, traditions as they were or as they were brought forward by um, the prophets and messengers that came with them but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the final messenger for this time, from the time that he was, he was there sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the way up until the end. And so the understanding of, of this understanding of adulthood, yeah, it, it, it's, it can be applied not only to that 7th century context, but it can also be applied to the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, and even up until today in the 21st century. With all of the nuances that you might get in different cultures and different situations at different times, yeah? The legalistic definition that somebody brings forward for adulthood today, yeah? If they say that uh, 16, 18, 20, and you make that the basis of your, of your definitions, sorry, maybe in 10 years time, honestly, wallahi, maybe in 10 years time that becomes obsolete. I mean, I, I don't know, wallahi, what effect these uh, phones and stuff like that, uh, phones, TVs, all these things are having on, uh, on young people, on like the, the youth, yeah? <laughs> I say the youth, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them, yeah? <laughs> but, like, even, even like a small difference, like, wallahi, I've, I've got younger siblings, yeah, that like some of them are in like primary school and stuff like that. Wallahi, I was not like that when I was their age. I don't know, that might, that might have just been me, I don't know, yeah? But the way they are, like, it's different. Well, it's, it's different. I'm sorry, it is just different. So I don't know if, if 16 will be a, a satisfactory thing in, in 10 years time. Maybe they'll push it back to 18. Maybe we'll push the drinking age back to 21. And then people at that time will be saying adulthood is 21, adulthood is 25, adulthood is 28. Why are you Muslims so backward? So like when you realize that, well, like it's insufficient. Honestly, I believe, yeah, it's for a Muslim, to have a lack of confidence in the Quran, in the Sunnah, in what the Prophet ﷺ came with, yeah, it has, that's an insufficient situation to be in. When Allah describes the believers in uh, in Surah Al Hujurat, and He says that Inna al Mu'minun al Ladina, He says Amru Thumma Lam Yartabu, that they don't persist in doubt, yeah. Like we have to get to a point where you know what? It's not just that. I have a, this thing might be a bit uncomfortable and uh, I have a way of kind of explaining it away or a way of kind of, you know, brushing it under the rug or not dealing with it. No, we have to try to use our, use the faculties that Allah has given us to be able to appreciate the hikmah in his sharia. 
And when that's done, you realize that this age of Aisha issue, yeah, it should not be an issue. It should not be an issue. It's understandable why it's an issue for the reasons that we've discussed today, but it should not be. And actually, yeah, and really actually, the Islamic way of addressing this, yeah, which is a very simple framework, which just takes into account, look, physical maturity, if there's harm taking place, if there's illegal, stuff like that, which can be applied not only to uh, young people, but also old people. Is there an upper bound to this age of consent thing? Sorry, is there, is there like, I don't know, well, like, I'm not a lawyer, yeah, I don't know, like, is, there, is there an upper bound to this thing? Like, for instance, is, is there anything in the law that says that it's, it's illegal for you to marry somebody that's 110 years old? <laughs> but for the same reasons that you don't allow people that are under 16 to get married, yeah? So you should, you should have an upper bound. Oh, oh, seriously, we can make that case. Why is there no upper bound to the age of consent? Do we now start calling you back with people for allowing the abuse of your elderly? <laughs> you know? But Islam in, <laughs> Islam in every situation, wallahi, every situation and circumstance, wallahi, 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 Islam in every situation and circumstance on this issue has a way of dealing with it in such a simple way. We look at, the, we look at uh, physically, are they able? Is it going to lead to harm? Is there abuse? Uh, okay, find a way, then it happens. If not, it doesn't happen. Khalas. And with that, you know, uh, I know this was supposed to be a sort of a more interactive session and I wanted to kind of uh, get some model debates and I think we should, uh, we should, we should practice that because um, uh, practicing articulating some of this stuff is useful. Uh, I think most of my practice until now has come uh, just talking to myself, honestly. Sometimes I, I, I watch things, or I read things and I just like, I get, I get emotional when I'm by myself so I'll just start talking and my mum will call me up from upstairs. She's like, who are you talking to downstairs? I'm like, but um, yeah, with that inshallah, I think it's quite a, it's a, it's a, a natural uh, conclusion that we've that we've that we've reached. I think this shower this, this should suffice uh, for the time being. Um, honestly, well, I, I I don't know if uh, when I'll next be sitting in this chair. It could be uh, could be next week. It could be next year. It could be maybe two, three, four years from now. I don't know. But this 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 way of uh, approaching the religion. Um, this is the way it has to be. You know, walillahi alaizzatu wali rasulihi wali mu'minin. That, that that dignity is is for Allah, is for His Messenger, and is for the believers. And um, there are things which are awkward because of where the situation that we're living in. But if you believe this is from Allah, and you believe that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent by him, then it's we have to have that that sense of izza. And if we have to, if it means you have to read and think and you know do whatever you know, then you have to be prepared to do it, man. You know, Salman al farisi wallahi, what was he prepared to do to uh, get to Medina to be with the Prophet You know, some of the companions of the Prophet who, uh, you know, they're, they're, be, they're having to leave their families, they're doing this, but they did that because they were seeking that truth in it. And so, this is, uh, this is I think, the, the message to end on, inshallah. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we'll ask you to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> but, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.